What is up, everybody? We're here for a quick, short video. Fantasy football rankings for week eight. These are my PPR ranks. Let's start off with the quarterbacks. We have all the usual suspects. Let's talk about slightly unusual suspects. So that's going to be Kirk Cousins. I see him having a great game. These are the type of games I like to target. High-paced, high-scoring, high fast-paced. That's what it is when you face the Cardinals. Love Kirk Cousins this week. Tua should be a solid start. Good things happen when you start fantasy players going against the Lions. Uh, Derek Carr, I do like. Lattimore is out, but we do have to keep tabs on guys like Darren Waller and Devontae Adams. That's going to make a big difference. Dak Prescott is a QB1 moving forward the rest of the season, but I don't like his upside. Top 12, sure. Top 10, possibly. But past that, I really don't see him being like a top 9 quarterback or anything like that. And Daniel Jones, I kind of want to top it off, wrap it up with Daniel Jones. I do think he could be an elite quarterback this week. A top 6 finish, a top 9 finish is very likely. So uh, even though I do have him ranked QB 12, it's just because it was kind of hard to rank him higher. Like I said, could easily be top six to top nine this week. Uh, and then a lot of unpredictable guys like uh, Jimmy G and Matthew Stafford. Maybe the bye week can do the Rams some good, but they're obviously having a lot of problems um, this season. Moving on to running backs. I'm going to move Josh Jacobs up a couple spots once we know he is playing for sure. He is questionable, but that's probably not going to be that big of a deal. So let's just move him up a couple spots right now. Um, I do think Joe Mixon is going to have a great game. Ken Walker, I'm ranking lower than most people, but I do think that Ken Walker is is basically a must start absolutely love him and i am a big travis Etienne fan but i am worried about his upside a little bit the pass catching will be there the snaps and the workload will be there but will the jaguars score touchdowns i don't know it's a question mark they're going to score a lot more touchdowns and they are scoring more touchdowns than they did last year that's for sure they were like the worst offense when it came to scoring touchdowns. So although the TDs are going to be there, I don't know if there's going to be a whole lot of TDs. Enough for ETN to be like that top six, top seven running back. I don't know if that's going to happen the remainder of the season. But as you guys know, I am a big Travis ETN fan. I do believe DeAndre Swift is back and he is a must start. And I'll just scroll down a little bit more. Deontay Foreman could be nearly a must start if Chuba Hubbard is not 100%. He's not really practicing this week. I'm recording this on Thursday. So that is something to note. We could see a 50-50 split moving forward with David Montgomery and Khalil Herbert. Because Khalil Herbert is really that good. Who's going to get traded to the Rams, guys? Is it going to be Kareem Hunt? Maybe it's David Montgomery. Maybe that's my deep, dark, secret fantasy. <laughs> Maybe that's it. Maybe I have Khalil Herbert on a few teams, including best ball teams. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what makes sense anymore. Not, nothing makes sense in the world anymore, in real life or in fantasy. Moving on to wide receivers. And that is going to bring me to... My bold prediction of the week brought to you by Sleeper. My bold prediction of the week and for the rest of the season is going to be that DJ Moore is going to be a top 12 wide receiver this week and a top 12 wide receiver moving forward. He had the most targets this past week, 7. Most yards this past week, 69. And he should be good moving forward just by default. QB positions better. I mean, can't get any worse than it was before. It's not like I'm not saying it's good or even like 
that like half decent. I'm just saying it can't get any worse. I don't think. Well, I guess <laughs> I guess it possibly could, but it can't get much worse. It technically can't get much worse. But the big point is by default, more targets. Robbie Anderson gone. Not a lot of other receiving options there in the past game. And CMC gone. That's like nearly 10 targets a game or more even some weeks. 10 targets a game gone. DJ Moore's got to get a chunk of that. And there's plenty of room to rise up the ranks this year. Jamar Chase is out. Devontae Adams pushed a, a cameraman. Like There's a lot going on here a lot of injuries um so it's very easy to rise the ranks and become a 12 top 12 wide receiver moving forward and that's what i think dj Moore is and ladies and gentlemen that is my bold prediction of the week brought to you by sleeper more like bold prediction for the season as well so i got dj Moore number 11 on my wide receiver list keep tabs on debo samuel he didn't practice hamstring Devonte adams Reports are saying he has a severe condition of the flu, missed the last two practices. They're ex kind of expecting and hopeful that he will play Sunday, but it is something to note. Seems like kind of a sneaky start with Lattimore out. He should get a lot of targets. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins is back. Amon Ra, I still like him as a good buy low candidate. Chris Olave should go off. Obviously, T. Higgins. Tyler Boyd and Hayden Hurst get a boost. Joe Burrow is playing at an elite level. He's an amazing quarterback right now. Just had to shake off a little bit of the poo-poo dust the first couple weeks, but he's back and playing elite. Um, and so with Jamar Chase missing four to six weeks, those other uh, Bengals receivers get a boost. Um, Brandon Cooks. Look, he's failed me. He's failed you. He's made me look like a big dummy. I still think he is startable this week. I don't know, though. You know, let's just. He's disappointed me so much. What have you done to me? You've almost ruined my career. I can't trust you anymore, Brandon Cooks. All right, let's, <laughs> let's move. Uh. All right, there we go. Um, I'm tired of this guy making me look like an idiot. Uh, so I moved Brandon Cooks down a couple spots. Uh, Thielen, I think, is a really good start. I have a feeling that Thielen, I didn't mean for that to rhyme, is going to be really good going against the Cardinals. Basically the same thing, the same theme going against the Cardinals. Great matchup. Maybe they double cover Justin Jefferson. Thielen likes to catch touchdowns. That's what he does. All right, let's move on. What do we got here? DK Metcalf still a non-participant at Seahawks practice today. Okay, so DK Metcalf didn't practice. Okay, today's Thursday. Moving on to tight ends. It's Mark Andrews and then a bunch of guys. And then Mark Andrews is a question mark, even though he is playing today. Uh, we don't know how much he's going to play. He, he got zero catches last week and one rushing, one rush attempt. Like, I don't know what's going on there. If you have Mark Andrews, start him. Uh, I do believe in Kyle Pitts this week. I did like how he looked last week. Now, they didn't connect or anything. Like, it didn't happen. But the opportunities were there. I like that they actually did use him as a receiver a little bit. He actually did get some targets. And even though it wasn't a huge, significant increase in targets and usage as a receiver, I, I still have faith in him. And I think if you have Kyle Pitts this week, I would probably start him. It's really hard to rank him much lower. Maybe I am crazy ranking him this high. Kelsey is on by. Uh, George Kittle is up and down. Maybe we, we boost George Kittle to three if Debo Samuel is out or limited. I think I will do that. But when Debo Samuel is playing, I'm not a huge fan of Kittle in fantasy. So I am believing in Kyle Pitts this week. I just feel like it's going to happen. And I think you should start him. 
if you have Kyle Pitts, this should I shouldn't need to say this, but make sure you do have a second tight end. Like, what the heck are you doing? Have some kind of contingency plan. Like, you need somebody. Go add a Dalton Schultz. Go add Dawson Knox. Definitely add Greg Dolchich, who's just on fire and just shocking the world his rookie year. And he was injured the beginning of the season, but oh boy, is he back. And uh, here's some more tight ends, and let's move on to defenses. The three elite options this week is going to be the Cowboys, Eagles, and Patriots. So hopefully you have one of those three. If not, here are the rest of my defenses right here. The Titans are a sneaky one. I've actually added them in a couple leagues, rolling with the Titans as my streaming option. They were available pretty much every league. And as for kickers, I really trust the top six options here, but don't worry. I think this week will be a good week for kickers. I think you can go with any of the guys I have here, uh, my top 14 names, Greg Joseph and above. I think you'll be just fine. So add um, you know, one of these 14 kickers, and you should be good to go this week. Actually, I have a lot of faith in these guys. Uh, Yun Wei Koo should be good. Brett Maher should be elite. And these four guys are, you know, here every week. Tucker Bass, Carlson, Evan McPherson. They're always elite options. Uh, so you should be good this week. All right, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Make sure you do subscribe to this YouTube channel. We're going to go live on our second YouTube channel, Fantasy Couch Podcast, soon as the Thursday night football game ends, Bucks versus Ravens. Let's see what happens. So make sure you guys do subscribe to that second YouTube channel as well. Good luck this week, and I'll see you on the next video or live stream.